Good evening everyone, time for another member update. This is the weekly chart of gold provided by netdania.com. Now I've drawn out what I consider to be a very, very important divergence here. You can see the trend line, the long-term trend line of gold that we're on. And then you can see this long-term trend line driven, uh, drawn from the same point in the MACD. So this is a massive divergence. Now you can see here the last time this divergence occurred, if you just blocked off everything to the right of this point, that there was this bottom and rally in the MACD as it was declining and there was this bottom in gold. You can see the size of the run-up that gold had. It ran from approximately 700 to 1900 so that is almost a triple and we're actually more oversold than that so it's quite possible to see a triple or more from here that's going to take us to four thousand dollars we don't even have any idea what that's going to do to the price of silver but we know that silver always follows gold and then eventually catches up and surpasses gold so a run from a similar point for silver in my opinion would be something along the lines of seventy five dollars or so based on the same type of projection now I want to look at gold and specifically this article in gold we trust on this in gold we trust dot ch interesting Chinese website but there's some very curious charts here and let's go through this a little bit in the trading week from January 20th through the 24th physical gold withdrawn from the SGE vaults accounted for more than 57 tons that's in a week this is the third week in a row SGE withdrawals have been more than weekly global mine production think about that more than the mine production. Now, I have pointed out before that you can't count the mine production that's in Russia and you can't count the mine production in China because they don't export any of their gold. So while they're hoarding the gold that they mine, they also are importing the gold that other countries mine. In the first 24 days of 2014, withdrawals from SGE accounted for 216 tons with one trading week left this month, it's very likely January 2014 will break the all-time record of monthly withdrawals surpassing the 236 tons from April 2013. Is this the height of the Chinese gold rush? So you can see here the yellow, let's pull the chart up. This yellow line here is the world mining production and you can see that the gold withdrawn to China is now starting to surpass world mining production. What does that mean? It means we're approaching end game. Now here's a chart of world gold mining production versus gold withdrawn from the Shanghai Exchange. And you can see here as the red line starts to approach the yellow, that's world mining production. And you also have COMEX physical delivery down here, so it's pretty much irrelevant. As I pointed out for a long time, the COMEX really isn't a player. It's just a player in the paper manipulation when the U.S. is open. But for the most part, the trading is done on the LBMA, and very little delivery of the world silver and gold actually occurs on the COMEX. Demand for gold has been strong due to the celebration of the Chinese Lunar Year, the Year of the Horse, starting January 31st. Across the nation, people buying gold and gifts for each other, especially by these low prices. It's quite clear now that the Chinese people will only buy more physical gold as the price remains low or will further drop. They are not scared of a loss in value, as it has been in their culture for thousands of years, to save in gold as a core asset. The young people 
this is taught by the elders. You can see it seems from the broken English here that this is actually a Chinese writer. After many years of economic suppression, they regained their freedom to do so, being spurred by newly acquired wealth. And they have a tremendous amount of wealth. Don't believe the press when they tell you that uh, the Chinese have so many peasants and stuff like that. The Chinese have more billionaires than anyone else and more millionaires than anyone else. The Chinese have a lot of money. Bloomberg reported older people believe gold brings good fortune and keeps its value, said Jiang, who left in search of another store because the small horse charms she wanted for her nieces and nephews were sold out. Gold gifts for children teach them about investment from a young age. Lower gold prices give an extra boost to demand, said Yang Ch Chen Wan, an analyst at Orient Securities in Shanghai. Sales of gold gifts typically accelerate in the two weeks leading up to the Lunar New Year and have really taken off. So you can see, here's a chart here of the premium on the Shanghai Gold Exchange. I think that's going to go much higher from here. So what's going on? Well, it appears that the Chinese have decided to cause a gold endgame. I don't see how it can continue the way it's been going for the Chinese to keep all of the gold that they mine and then begin to import more than world mining production. Something has to give and it's going to have to give in this price. And the price, in my opinion, is probably going to $5,000 an ounce for gold. Very, very close to that when it finally does take off. Now, I wanted to talk about this banker thing. Jennifer first posted on our blog, and this is just a coverage of the third banker, but actually there are a lot of bankers and billionaires and this has actually been going on for quite some time where very, very rich and powerful people are found suicided, I'll say. So let's read this. This is from Zero Hedge. If the stock market were already crashing, then it would be simple to blame the dismally sad rash of dead bankers in the last week on that. Certainly, that was reflected in 1929. However, for the third time in the last week, a senior financial executive has died in what appears to be a suicide, as Bloomberg reports following the deaths of a J.P. Morgan senior manager Tuesday and a Deutsche Bank executive Sunday, Russell investment chief economist and former Fed economist Mike Duker was found dead at the side of a highway in Washington State. Police said the death appeared to be a suicide via Bloomberg. Mike Duker, the chief economist at Russell Investments, was found dead at the side of the highway that leads to the Tacoma Narrows Bridge in Washington State, according to the Pierce County Sheriff's Department. He was 50. Now think about that. Who works their entire life spending countless hours trying to put aside some wealth only to toss themselves off a bridge. Doesn't make sense. He may have jumped over a 4-foot, 1.2-meter fence before falling down a 40- to 50-foot embankment, Pierce County Detective Ed Troyer said yesterday. He said the death appeared to be a suicide. Duker was reported missing January 29th, and a group of friends had been searching for him along with law enforcement. Troyer said Duker was having problems at work without elaborating. Duker was in good standing at Russell and said Jennifer Tice, a company spokeswoman, she declined to comment on Troyer's statement about Duker's work issues. But as Michael Snyder noted recently, if the stock market was already crashing, it would be easy to blame the suicides on that. The world certainly remembers what happened during the crash of 1929. Historically, bankers have been stereotyped as the most likely to commit suicide. This has a lot to do with the famous 1929 stock market crash, which resulted in 1,600 banks failing and more than 20,000 businesses going bankrupt. The number of bankers committing suicide directly after the crash is thought to have been only around 20, with another 100 people connected to the financial industry dying by their own hand within the year. Duker had also been a research economist at the St. Louis Fed. 
He published dozens of research papers over the past two decades, many on monetary policy, according to the St. Louis Fed's website, which ranks him among the top 5% of economists by number of works published. His most cited work was a 1997 paper titled Strengthening the Case for the Yield Curve as a Predictor of U.S. Recessions, published by the Reserve Bank while he was a researcher there. So with stocks a mere 4% off their highs, are so many high-ranking and well-respected bankers committing suicide? So that's a very good question. And what is the answer? Well, I think there's three conclusions you can draw from this. One would be that the classic explanation of they know that they are involved in a potentially enormous bankruptcy and investigation and then possible criminal charges and they can't face that so they just uh, kill themselves now that explanation doesn't make a lot of sense because if that were the case then we would have already seen some type of crash there would be some calamity but we haven't seen any financial calamities that would lend credence to that explanation the next explanation possible would be that they were threatened in other words they were told by certain people that they were involved with say higher-ups in their organization that it would be better for them to commit suicide rather than take the risk of either a being exposed or having the lives of their families threatened so that's quite possible that the higher-ups would protect themselves by giving them the option of offing themselves to save their family now I don't think that one's too likely either although I don't put too much trust in going into protective custody I think that there would be some options in that case. The last scenario I think is the most likely and that is probably that these people were actually suicided. Now we've seen in Europe that there is a large investigation going on. There's actually a number of large investigations going on. The LIBOR investigation continues and I think we're probably going to be seeing a gold investigation. If you remember, there was a mention out of Germany that the gold suppression conspiracy was actually going to make the LIBOR conspiracy look like a small thing. So it appears to me that the most likely explanation is that the investigators are starting to get close to the truth of what has happened and of course what has happened is that the British and the Americans have looted all the gold they have rehypothecated it they've sold it and the gold is gone Germany's not going to get their gold back the Chinese know this they're buying up as much gold as possible before the end game occurs and so I believe that the most likely explanation is that when you have an investigation into organized crime or financial crimes or anything like that normally the way it works and the rumor is at least what I've heard is that the European prosecutors are much more aggressive than what we have in the United States but the way that those types of investigations work is that they look for the person who has their fingerprints on the transactions and has knowledge of the crime. One of the recent suicides was, I believe it was an IT person who was in charge of the trades, who knew all the trades, and uh, then the other ones are some of the traders. So they're always going to look for a person who is boots on the ground has actually executed the trades especially if they're illegal trades and they're gonna grab that person 
and then of course what they're going to do is they're going to try to squeeze that person and get them to implicate others. Now I think that this thing probably goes all the way to the very top. I don't think that we can buy the explanation of rogue traders being in charge of this. This goes to the very top of governments in the world, especially the British and the American governments. And it's my opinion that probably to protect the ultimately guilty parties, it's easier to bump off those who will cooperate with the regulators and uh, the regulators are going to offer them a deal. That's the way it always works. They start at the bottom. They offer a deal to get someone higher up implicated. Then they get they get that person. They offer them a deal. It works its way up the chain until they finally get at the top people. And my best guess is that these are probably hits ordered from the top to bump off these lower people that can ultimately implicate the people on the top. So it looks like this gold game is coming to an end and I think that when it does come to an end that there are going to be unbelievable re revelations about corruption going on in the Western banking system. I believe the Chinese know that and they're trying to accumulate as much gold as they possibly can before the whole thing blows up. When this thing blows up, whether it's a revaluation of gold, say to five to $10,000 an ounce, or if the market actually takes off, I think that either case, we're going to see a massive rally in gold from this point forward. And as these things break, then we may see a violent revaluation of gold. And we'll talk to you next time.